at the rear naked choke. We understand how to control the back, we understand how to reset the back, we understand how to beat the hands and start to get our arm underneath our opponent's chin. And so now just a quick video going over the rear naked choke. For those of you that have either never learned this before or are looking to make your choke more effective or understand a bit more of the concepts behind it. So just do it from a seated upright position for demonstration purposes. The rear naked choke, I guess is technically a strangulation in the sense that we're cutting off blood to the brain rather than blocking the airway. But for nomenclature's sake, we just stick with, everyone calls it a choke. What I'm looking to do is have my elbow in line with my opponent's chin so that his airway is clear because his airway is now in the crook of my elbow, but my bicep is going to be occluding, blocking the right side artery and my forearm is going to be occluding the left side of his artery. What I'm looking to do is get this hand a deep grip over my bicep, or really I like to think of it as gripping the tricep because what ends up happening is if you just grab your bicep and I close my arm, you can see my wrist is actually still here, sitting on the outside. Now my grip configuration, the whole rear naked choke, is only going to be as strong as the weakest link, which is going to be my joint, my wrist that's floating around here. The goal is actually to clamp down your bicep and forearm over top of your forearm itself. So rather than having this grip where there's the wrist here, it'd be like closing a triangle over top of your foot. We're looking to close it over top of the wrist so that now the articulation back here is fine. It's not absorbing any of the pressure or force that I'm generating. So as I'm here, I think about gripping to the back of my tricep so that then as I close, it's now over top of my forearm. Now, a mistake that people make, and this is how I first learned it, was taking this hand and putting it on the back of your opponent's head. Because the idea was you can either break posture by pushing forward, which isn't very effective, and from the self-defense perspective that I had learned it from was, well, this will stop headbutts. It's also mostly crap. The problem is, is that this lever becomes too accessible now, where this lever is denied and hidden, and so Kevin's only defense at this point is getting this top arm. If this is sitting up anywhere too close, it gives them access to it, and now I've lost the ability to perform the choke. What I'm looking to do is have this arm gripped back behind like his, uh, his scapula, his rear delt, and I'm looking to detach myself briefly so that then I can fire this arm in to my tricep and have this blade of my forearm go across the back of his neck and move all the way to my shoulder. This slight space that I create here, I'm giving up my primary control for a moment, but I have my hooks as secondary, and so that's the main purpose of them here, is that if I was to go here and try and get this choke right now, I don't have very strong control, Kevin starts turning. Even if he just turns slightly, he's changed the angle of the choke now, and it's not gonna be as effective, and now he's gonna be able to survive. By me having the hooks, it allows me now to free up my primary control so we can do the hand fighting, so that we can do the digging, so that I can get this grip and I can free the space to settle into the rear naked choke. I'm creating this space to slide my forearm behind and fill that space. One, this already fills the space behind him that if he tried to headbutt backwards right now, it's going to be very difficult. But I'm also going to be taking my head and bringing it in really close over top of this arm because this is the arm he needs to access to be able to defend this. So I've hidden this arm as a lever here. It's buried. Even if he grabs up at my wrist right now on my right arm, sorry. No, this arm. He can, it does nothing. Why? Because the end of the lever is in the crook of my arm. Now this arm goes back and I cover it with my chin so that now if he tries to grab the end of the lever here, it's very difficult to do so because I have another layer on top protecting it. My head stays here. If this was like a self-defense thing and you're worried about eye gouging or whatnot, then we just tuck the chin more along my forearm. I'm going to tuck and hide my eyes so that if he tries to grab back at me, he can. Hopefully, you're not in that situation where you have to think about that. Now, the choke mechanics of actually closing this, we're creating a triangle. The two sides of the triangle were my forearm and bicep that are going to be closing and including the arteries. And I have a backstop, which is my chest and also my forearm here against the back of the neck so that he's unable to recede and take the pressure away. The goal is to take that triangle and to make the angle more acute, shrinking that angle smaller and smaller as it blocks the, uh, the arteries. So 
My goal here is to actually take my arms in this configuration, and you can see how there's space in between my body, and then there's a bigger space here in between my elbow, and to take my arms and close everything in here. So I'm crunching in and closing my elbows to my body like this, and see how there's no space. The idea is to just keep doing this, and obviously we're not gonna be able to get that close, but with this motion, everything tightens up and it starts to perform the choke. The other thing that I'm gonna to look to do is give a slight extension push with my legs as I'm going into the choke mechanics to create a hanging effect where Kevin's neck has basically a noose wrapped around him and I'm pushing his legs and hips down a bit so it's gonna start pushing and increasing the pressure into his throat. So here's I got this attach here, everything's nice and tight. I'm gonna to look to start closing my elbows in, crunching in slightly and creating a slight push where I'm pinching my knees and pushing down on his hips here like this. Should take almost no effort. Really slow and controlled, I'm breathing in to finish it. And it's gonna be a really clean choke. If there's any pressure on the windpipe where it's super uncomfortable, then have your partner tell you and ask your partner to tell you if it feels like it's cranking on uh, the neck or on the windpipe. Important things to note with the rear naked choke, or really any choke, is make sure you breathe when you're applying this bloody thing. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at students performing this for the first time or while rolling, and I can't tell who's going to pass out first because both people are going red, one person's in the choke, and the other person's applying the choke but not breathing. If you're cranking the hell out of it, you're doing, wrong, doing it wrong, and if you're not breathing while you're doing it, then you're doing it wrong. So make sure slowly inhaling, which is expanding your chest, which is also helping take away space as you're applying this rear naked choke to make sure that you're also uh, providing like oxygen to your muscles so you can choke longer. And the other thing is just a mindset that I've always liked about uh, the idea of finishing chokes in which you don't show all, you don't show your hand, your full potential at the very beginning. You incrementally increase the, the force that you're putting into this choke. So you start at 5%. Increase to 10%, increase to 15, 20, 25%. As you're breathing, so you're able to actually do this efficiently, Kevin doesn't know how far I can go with this choke and how much pressure I can generate. And so it starts to mentally screw with him. How far can Murray go? This already sucks. It's going to keep getting worse. You can actually start to induce a little bit of a panic in your, uh, your partner uh, or your opponent. And you're going to conserve energy while at the same time being able to play a mental aspect to this. There's been many times. We've all been here either on the failing end or on the success end where you are super deep with a choke or in a choke and you feel that your opponent is giving it everything they had, but you feel like there's a little bit of space or you know that you can survive just a few more seconds and it's like, well, if Kevin just, if I just don't tap for three seconds, Kevin is going to blow his wad, he's going to burn his arms out and I'm going to survive. And you just sit there and you're just eating that thing or you're cranking it. That's because he saw how far I can go. He knows that I uh, am cranking 100% and that he just has to survive a little bit longer and it's not an efficient way of applying the choke. He knows I'm gonna burn out. So apply it nice and slowly. It's good for drilling purposes, but it's also good for being able to strategically mess with your opponent mentally while you're trying to go for the rear naked choke or really any kind of choke.